Welcome to our backyard. This is the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We are two friends having a discussion after everyone else has passed out or gone to bed. Grab a drink and listen as we discuss everything from automation, space exploration, and why the meaning of life is 42. Chaos. Randomness. The unknown. A thing many hate and many dread. To have no control, no way of knowing, to be helpless. But what if the very thing many fear, the chaos that engulfs our lives, is the one thing, or things, to protect us in the modern world? What if I were to tell you, your safety, and mine, is dependent and reliant, and reliant on randomness? What if I were to tell you, Your safety and security depends on lava lamps. But before I tell you how lava lamps and chaotic items keep you safe, and no, I didn't go off the deep end, not yet. Nick, how are you? What are you drinking? I'm doing good. I got some bush light here. What about you? Drinking some tin cup whiskey and uh, Nick, we're going back to the science world. Yay. (laughs) <laughs> what does lava lamps pendulums radioactive material and microphones on roofs all have in common they help create randomness that is not impossible to replicate for your protection yes your security your protection literally depends on lava lamps or something like it why well we must start with randomness webster define defines random as lacking a definite plan, purpose, or pattern, which seems simple, but to achieve randomness is actually really hard to do. For randomness is hard to create. To determine if something is random or to be truly random is hard. There are very few things in our life that are random. You might think something is random or a coincidence, but it suddenly is. Nick, give me three random numbers one through ten five seven three now those numbers you just gave me aren't random at best they're pseudo random i'll explain what that is in a bit but i can tell you statistically what numbers what people are most likely to choose like one and zero being very low on the category zero wasn't an option for nick but being one is a very low option that people choose or simply having a pattern where it's one, one, one. That's three ran- could be three random numbers. Very unlikely to be chosen. And if they are chosen, like like I said, one, 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 or two, 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 they see that repeating pattern and they think it's not random, or it can never happen, but it can. So it's easier to predict and figure out what numbers you will choose, Nick, before you even come up with them. Your numbers aren't random. But what does this have to do with lava lamps? What does this have to do with protecting me? I don't know. You're supposed to tell me. Oh, I'm going to kill you. It has to do with encryption, Nick. Encrypting your data, your passwords, your email. Hell, even encrypting your car. To protect data, to protect you, secure encrypted connections need to be made. And computers, through decent methods, cannot create true randomness. At best, they can create pseudo-random. Pseudorandom is when, well, I'll use numbers as an example. Pseudorandom is a numbers that are a set of numbers generated by a computer. But computers, at a very base level, are deterministic devices. Their behavior is completely predictable. So if you're a predictable device trying to make random numbers, that random is only random so far. If you need to create numbers that are close enough to random, they're okay, but security... I don't recommend using pseudo number generated numbers by computers. So when my phone keeps recommending I do this random assortment of numbers, don't listen to it? Yes, actually, don't listen to it. If you want top of the line security, the same security banks, business secrets, nuclear launch codes use, you need true random. You need to use lava lamps. It's crazy, but let me explain. In fact, let me paint you a picture. Imagine a building. In this building, there's a wall of over a hundred lava lamps, to be specific. All different colors, all going at the same time. 
Now imagine a camera watching the lava lamps, but this is no ordinary camera. This is a camera. This is a camera that connects to software that will use the image of the lava lamps and monitor their unpredictable changes and convert it all into randomness and randomness for codes, numbers, and security. The cameras watch the lava lamps to come up with random generated code. Every little thing changing how the lava lamp flows, the time of day, the temperature, the earth's position from the sun, all creating unique and unpredictable patterns. For if one variable changes, even by a percent of a percent of a percent, the lava lamps will produce a completely random pattern, which can be used to generate randomness. And this is what companies do. Companies like Cloudflare. Part of their business is to create secure encryption. Hell, the wall of lava, lava lamps I just described is responsible for 10% of the internet traffic. I want to repeat that. A hundred lava lamps is partly responsible for 10% of the internet. That thing, the thing that stoners and hippies and have their bedroom isn't just decoration. It's a keystone to make sure websites, banks, governments, your phone, my computer, Nick's truck is safer and more secure. The reason why I'm throwing trucks and mentioning cars in this is because they use a similar random generated C to connect to your car's fob to your vehicle, making it harder to break into your car electronically. Your fob and your key having a seed, a random set of generated some numbers. So say I had an equation. Well, if I want to plug in X and Y into the equation, I'll need to choose random numbers. Well, if I do it with a computer, it's pseudoscience. But if I do it with a lava lamp, it's completely random, which makes it harder to break into. But it's not just lava lamps. It's noise. Now, that's a common word, but not in the usage that I mean. I don't mean sound and audio. No, noise I mean as a disruption caused by other factors. You're plus constant for all my math nerds out there at the end of your equations. Imagine a Gaga counter. That is actually one of them used to create random numbers, random code. Gaga counter reads radioactive material as it de de decays. People have machines that read those detections to help create random encryption. But, you know, the ozone that day is kind of not doing bad, so more solar radiation gets in. It kind of disrupts the actual reading, the actual radioactive material. That's a noise. If I have an accelerometer on a device, but, you know, it's a bumpy road, that's noise. All these things are similar to a lava lamp. A pendulum on a pendulum on a pendulum in front of a camera uses advanced software to turn random images into randomness, much like the lava lamp, is also another way for chaotic data. Microphones on roofs, hearing sounds. I mean, just think of all the things, if I put a microphone on the roof, all the variables I'm trying to control. You got distance of sounds creating it. Maybe there's an ambulance or something like that. You got light. Light can help predict and make sounds. Weather, all know it. Random storm pops in. All those possibilities, they make it too hard to predict. Well, too hard to predict yet. Chaos, a thing hated by many, is used and controlled to create randomness, a thing actually rare in this universe. Much of this universe is predictable, even by human standards. And there is a possibility that the randomness we generate isn't even truly random. It's just too random by our standards. Chaos and randomness might not even exist. We might just be too foolish to understand. So next time you think something is a coincidence, just know it's probably not. And you run into a friend that still has a lava lamp. Just know that mixture of chemicals and heat used to create pretty displays is actually a display protecting your phone, your car, your computer, banks, governments. That lava lamp is the nightlight of the internet keeping the monsters at bay. Lava lamps, they're your guardian angel. Thank you all for listening.
Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram and Backyard Philosophy Podcast on Facebook.